Hi, I'm Caroline Beckett, and I do so enjoy God's comedy in the Bible. The Bible as comic sketch does seem to be an underdeveloped area of theology. Or maybe that's just me. In fact, some of the funniest, most groan-worthy moments in scripture come because people are not listening or taking God seriously, or properly paying attention to each other or to God. Like Balaam and his donkey, or the Emmaus disciples who tell Jesus his own whole story, completely oblivious to the fact that he's literally right there walking with them. Or Jonah with his la 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 not listening and running in the opposite direction and having that encounter with a large fish. Or St Paul on his route to Damascus, the rightest of the rightest of the right, until he isn't. But here, though, the main characters, Zechariah and Elizabeth, are listening. And it's the side characters who aren't, and they just want to follow tradition. My name's Andy Griffiths, and, and I'm also really glad I've got a God with a sense of humour. I need that, frankly. And in this story, I'm noticing that with Zechariah still on mute, the male priest being quiet for a change, it's the laywoman Elizabeth who gets to speak up. Yes, but they don't believe her. And I can imagine the next bit going a little bit like a game of charades, you know. One syllable sounds like go, going, running, gone, rhymes with gone. Oh, get a writing tablet, someone. It seems a really strange, ridiculous, tenuous, messy way of, of, of getting us to the point where God wants to be. I mean, this is this is the proper beginning of the New Testament, you can imagine. It, it, it's the moment the story goes public, the transformation, as the miracle is shared in the form of this healthy eight day uh, old baby boy. But God lets its power be transmitted through a mute priest and a woman whose word isn't trusted or valued by her society. In community organising, after disorganising and reorganising and listening and planning, well, that's where the stage of taking action through public storytelling happens. And this is, if I'm honest, where it can all get a bit hair-raising, because people who've never done it before suddenly speak up and tell their stories and speak truth to power. Hair-raising for the people who speak up and hair-raising for people like me who try to carve out the opportunity for them to do so. So the team that comes together and makes a difference isn't the slickest, most capable, most naturally powerful team. It's the team that care, that bother to show up, that have the time and the energy. Stories of change making tend to start with oddballs or with people who are undervalued or not taken serious. Look at the sheer power of Greta Thunberg. But I guess at her first protest, she looked a little bit foolish. Just a young girl with a sign all on her own. And we often want to wait until we have the dream team. It's a very human way of looking at stuff, but that's not how God operates. It can be unhelpful if we think about being chosen by God as being like the experience of being picked for teams in school, all lined up and hopeful, but pretty passive really in the process. Choosing by God is much more of a two-way thing. God's caring meets ours. God's desire for justice meets ours. Of course, God being God, God does most of the work, but us being made in God's image means us being active, creative agents of transformation in the world. The Bible has an awful lot to say about God choosing the foolish to shame the wise and choosing the weak to shame the strong. So um, 
maybe I mean, no offense if you feel like you're the one that was always picked first in the playground, but maybe being the chosen isn't always the compliment that we think it is. You're probably right. And that's a thought that ought to cut us down to size. But it's comforting too, to think that we can't be too young and inexperienced, or too old and washed up, or too insignificant, or too quiet for God to shake us loose and work with us. God, give me the passion to tell my story at the right time and the humility to see it as a small part of your bigger story. God, give me the faith to get out of the way so that unlikely speakers of uncomfortable truths have chance to be heard. Amen. <laughs>